How important is racing for the evolution uh, and design of sailboats in general? Short-handed racing in particular has led to so many innovations that we, on cruising boats, we take for granted now. It's not funny. When we're designing a short-handed race boat as opposed to, say, a fully crewed race boat, a Volvo boat, we're inherently designing for only one or two people to sail the boat. We're inherently designing a boat which has to be stable, uh, safe, uh, that has to work well under autopilot. All these things are what cruising boats do. So boats like Gamesa, even though they may not seem it, are really important to the development of cruising boat design. And, and we have more in common as race boat designers of these boats with cruising boats than meets the eye, I would say. Um, in particular, developments that you can really pin to these kind of boats are automatic steering, self tailing winches, furling drops. I mean, where would we be without those? Cruising chutes. All these are developments that come not from fully crewed racing or back in the days of IOR. These all come from short-handed racing. The first, uh, the first um, self tailing winches I, that I believe were developed were developed in France by Eric Tavoli. Blondie Hasler developed the, the uh, hydrovane steering system. This is this is the history of, of, of these boats. We develop stuff which eventually ends up on cruising boats. Um, so there's another question. How long does it take for some of these um, innovations to make it from the race boats onto uh, into sort of the general market? It depends very much on the size of the boat and how quickly the stuff moves because obviously some of the innovations that we come up with are not expensive, but some of them do have a cost uh, entail. To them. Uh, the first boats with um, with composite rigging, for instance, were definitely open six. The first one was a guy called Yves Partier who built uh, a rig with PBO rigging. Now, PBO has got into the big cruising market. I mean, you, you would not build a big super yacht, or in fact, a boat probably above 75 rigging feet without putting some form of composite rigging on it. That's yet to trickle down to the J-boat size, you know, 30, 40 feet. But J-boats now have carbon rigs. The first carbon rigs were developed in short-handed race boats. So it can take 20 years, it can take five years. Um, so you've said that this boat is sort of built with um, reliability in mind, but if you had to name something that you might have taken a bit of a risk on to get an advantage, is, is there anything you could put your finger on? No. When we build a boat new, design a boat new, there's always something that you go, oh, well, maybe, maybe not. Um, but now this boat is so far into its development stage that you know, we're three years, I think, since the boat was the first launch. But you know, touch carbon, touch wood, um, there's nothing that I can think of which I'm particularly concerned.